Hi everyone, welcome back. So today I'm going to continue the Hacker Ranks one month prep kit. So we have done three questions so far and it has been quite interesting for me to work on them. So as we go, keep going on, the questions will get harder and harder. So let's see how it goes for today. So now we're going to try this question, which is sparse arrays. I've not read this question yet, but let's go. Uh, yep, the ID is loading. Okay, got it. So let's jump straight into it. There's a collection of input strings and a collection of query strings. And for each query string, determine how many times it occurs in the list of input strings. So an array of results. So there's, a, there's an array of strings of different types. And the queries are like this. Okay. So there are two instances of A, B. Okay, interesting. So they don't consider A, B in this, the last one. Okay, okay. So, okay. So they want something that is exactly like this. So A, B, and A, B. So A, B, C, there'll be only be one, and B, C, there'll be zero. So, okay, makes sense. So complete the function matching strings in the editor below. The function must return an array of integers representing the frequency of occurrence of each query string in strings. So yeah, an array of strings to search, an array of query strings. So, okay, n is thousand, so that, okay. So um, let's try to understand the question first before we jump into the coding. So we first get an input, which is just an integer, which indicates how many uh, strings we have in the first place. So if there's four, there are four strings followed by another integer, which indicates how many queries there are. And the number of queries is how many, is the number of output lines that we would have as well. So, okay, and the queries ABA, even though there's an ABA in the second line, we don't count that, I'm assuming, yep. So ABA is just this and this, the rest are not considered at all. So, yep. Interesting. So let's continue to any other examples. I think we are good to go. Let's uh, let's get to the coding parts now. Okay. So as usual, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by typing out what is the input that I'm given. So print strings and queries. And I'm just going to run this now. So I do this normally just to see what I'm working with. So in this case, I can see that I have an array with all the strings and an array with all the queries. So that it, it like I could, I could read this as well, but this just makes it so much uh, easier for me to understand. And okay, so that is that. So what I need to do is um, off the top of my head, the first solution that I would think is like a hash table, that kind of a structure so that, so I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert the array of strings that I have into a, a dictionary that stores the counts of each value, like how many times each item came about in the string. So I'll pass through the strings array once. And as I'm passing through, I will append, uh, I will add the new, words into the dictionary. So let's let's just get started. Dict is equal, is dict some, yep. okay, I'll make this. It's, uh, yeah, no, just ignore that. <laughs> okay. So dict is just going to be a dictionary. And what I'm going to do is for I in strings, I'm going to, if I in, not in dictionary, I'm going to do this. Dictionary i is equal to one. Else dictionary one, sorry, i is equal to can I do this? I think I can do this. So what I'm doing now is I'm basically passing through the strings. And if the element is in strings, 
if the element is not in the dictionary that I'm creating, it will just add the item into the dictionary. So it will be like, uh, in this case, ABA will be equal to one. When it goes again and it comes to this line, ABA is inside dictionary. Hence, it will be it will call the value of dictionary and it will plus equals one. So when I reference the ABA's value inside dictionary now, it will be two because there was already one previously and I'm adding one more now. So just to make sure that we did this properly, I can just print it out a good practice in coding is always to debug your code as you're going along. So uh, let's see, I, I just type in Dick. I wish I thought of a better name for that, but it's fine. So if we look at it over here. So in this case, we had two ABAs in the strings and over here in the count, we have ABA for two, which is what we were looking for anyway. So yeah, it, our passing through the strings works perfectly. So next up, what we are trying to do is we need to go through the queries now. So to go through the queries, same thing, I'll do a simple follow-up. For, uh, for I in queries, should I, maybe I should put J. Even though it's fine if I use I again, it's safer to just use J now. So for J in queries, um, if j in dic, so this is a special thing about dictionaries or hash, hash map hash tables. It can access and reference things in O1 time complexity, in constant time complexity, which saves us a lot of time as searching through the list and doing some value count or something would take us quite a long time to do it. So this speeds up the process by a lot and is a very useful tool to have in your arsenal. So now if the word is in the dictionary to start with. We can just print that actual word. So something like dick, call out that item that you're looking for. Else, you can just print zero because we know that if it's not in the dictionary, that means it doesn't exist. So in this case of AB, AB doesn't exist in any of the strings that were provided to us. So AB would not be inside the dick and hence we can just print zero directly. But I'm assuming that's not how they want us to get the final result because I'm seeing some map thingy over here. So let's just run this first to see if we're getting 210 first in, a, in some order so that we can work on the next step. So yep, we do get 210. We do get the output that they want, but it is not through this. So this is a slightly annoying part about hacker ranks, which is there's not much of a flexibility in how you can present your answers. While some people get annoyed by that, I actually enjoy that because I, I know how, like it's a small step. It's, it's an extra, let's like a small extra step that we need to do, which doesn't even take a lot of time. So what they're expecting is they want some kind of a array to map the values and print it out. So. The printing thing, all of it will be done by this. All we need to do is, is provide them an array that will process them in order. So we need to put the values in this order, 210, in like in this specific order that they requested as well. So all I need to do is instead of printing, I need to, in the end, return something. Like over here, as you can see, res must, be, must hold some value so that it can work in these three lines. Right now, when you just print without returning anything in the above function, res doesn't hold any value. It's like undefined right now. So what we need to do is we just need to return some value to it and we need to return an array. So let's just create an empty array. So I'm going to call it ARR is empty array. And instead of printing this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to append arr.append. Oh, what is this? Am I having extra brackets? Okay, no, I'm correct. Okay, don't print. So arr.append, this new item. So how does this work? So uh, append is uh, quite an efficient function, which it just adds things to the, to the list and it works at a constant time complexity as well. So no need to worry about that. So, yep, that's about it. Likewise, over here as well, arr. 
append and we are good to go. So after we appended the values in order as we would like them to be in, we just return ARR. So this function now returns ARR, which is uh, appending all the query results. And this ARR gets assigned to res and res gets mapped into a long string, which gets printed out in a certain order like this, which is what we are looking for. So let's just jump straight into it and run this code. I'm thinking it'll work fine right now. Okay, yep. So let's submit the code. And amazing, we have all the test cases passed. So let's look back. Let's see if we can do anything faster. By nature of the question, we have to pass through every item in string and every item in query. And there's no roundabout uh, ways around it. There, there has to be a way to query all of each one of them at least once. So in that sense, we are already very efficient. Like there's not much that we can do to improve our solution. By using a dictionary, we do reduce the time complexity of referencing the items in the later stage over here. So, yep, I think this is the best solution that we can work on for now. So, yep, uh, hope you guys enjoyed this session. And yeah, it was interesting to work on this question as well. And yeah, I will work on, I'll subsequently upload more videos from the interview preparation kit. And hopefully it's enjoyable for you guys as well. And you learn something out of it. So, yeah, I uh, will see you guys in the next video and stay safe. Bye.